Hey y'all, welcome to today's video. I have a special guest here, as you can see, because we are getting into a meaty topic today about what it means to walk with God and to deny the world and to deny our flesh and all of that stuff. And my husband here has been a great support in my journey this past year of just diving deeper with God and growing in my relationship with God. And so I wanted him here for this conversation. Mm. Um, so yeah, just follow along for this conversation and I hope it touches someone out there. So let's get started into why I wanted to do this. Did you want to pray first or can I? Yeah, so love to pray. Okay, let's pray into this conversation. Yes. Father God, I thank you for this conversation, Lord. I thank you for the people watching this, Lord. Um, Holy Spirit, I pray that you can just open their eyes and ears to your love, Lord. And may our uh, words be just uh, an offering to you, Lord God. Uh, guide our tongues, guide our speech, help us be to be quick to uh, listen and slow to speak, Lord. And um, may you speak through us, Holy Spirit, and shine the light of Jesus um, through our words. And I pray this all in his name. Amen. Amen. So the reason why we're having this conversation today is because I saw this video on Instagram. I'm going to play it again so it's like fresh on our minds, but it really hit me today. And I was just like, wow, like this is literally the season of life that I'm in right now. And I want to share it all with y'all and encourage people to not do the same as me, but to choose God over the world. Um, so this is the video. I got to make a choice. I can't keep going. At the end of the day, I can't have it both ways. Yet here's the problem. So many of you find yourself wanting to walk up and experience all the beauty and the benefit that comes with the things of God. But here's what I want you to see. You'll never be able to get there with your foot on the world. You're going to have to make a choice. And ultimately, some of you are trying so hard to live in this middle that you're finding yourself now at the place to where, guess what? You gotta cho choose. Am I gonna choose the things of the world? And am I gonna go there? Because to do so, guess what? I'm fully committed. I've gotta go there. Or am I gonna go and I'm gonna choose the things of God? Some of you are like, this is scaring me to death, right? <laughs> Can I be honest? It should scare you too. You live your life on this tightrope somehow thinking that God doesn't see what you're doing. And all along, what God is saying is that, look, I'm just telling you, it's not gonna end well. Some's about to come crashing down one way or the other, and I'm asking you to make a choice to be able to choose the right path, knowing that the step towards this is gonna lead to life, but the step over there is gonna lead to destruction. So that's the video. Um, we can just like generally talk about yeah. like what stood out to us first. I think for me, the biggest thing that I liked at the start was how he was able to go up the ladder, like mm -hmm. go up both ladders at the same time. And I know in like my personal walk with God and I feel like in the church in general, like a lot of people are doing both. Like a lot of people are going to church, doing things for the Lord and like are actively working for God. But then at nighttime or in their private time in their own lives in their own thoughts like are doing things that are of the world and mm -hmm. so like there's a it's very much possible to do both you know and i think like some of the scriptures that we're going to get into in this place is like it's impossible to be both but like yeah. in the active world like in our active walk in faith like it's very much possible to do both but there will come that point where you have to choose where like your soul will feel so unsettled mm -hmm that like you either choose like, mm, maybe God like this God life isn't for me because I really like these things mm -hmm. or where you have to choose like, hey, I know that God's not calling me for these things, so let me choose the Lord. And so that's what I really like, even though we don't see that part of the sermon in this clip, like he was clearly able to mm -hmm. get up there on both ladders at the same time, but like it's not sustainable. Yeah, so like, yeah, yeah, so kind of like what stood out to you? Yeah, no, there's this awesome scripture that Jesus says uh, in Luke 14, 25 through 33 and he says um if anyone comes to me and does not hate his father mother wife children brothers and sisters yes even their own life such person cannot be my disciple and whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple suppose one of you wants to build a tower like this is the guy going up the ladder he's 
Well, when you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it. Okay, so now we're at, we're, we have both legs on, on yeah. both ladders. So now we're, we're oh wow, I gotta, I gotta deny myself here. I, got to, I have to serve God here instead of catering to this need that I want. Um, and so uh, when you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it, for if you lay the foundation and you're not able to finish it, Everyone who sees it will ridicule you, saying, this person began to walk, build and wasn't able to finish it. Oh, wow. And so, uh, so yeah, there's a big point about sitting down and really counting the, the cost. Um, Jesus says, finishes this point in saying, in the same way, those of you who do not give up everything you, you, uh, you have cannot be my disciples. Mm. Yeah. So it's, a, it's very clear, and I get the point how... Like looking at my own journey with Christ, like I have walked in the world when I first got saved to the point where now I like I can say like I hate the things of the world and mm-hmm. like counting the cost like every day, seeing his suffering is 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 enjoyable for the Lord. It doesn't feel pleasant in the time, but rebuking, uh, just that point how I want to call through before, but I was feeling that conviction like okay, it's really honoring God. If I'm going against my my conscience mm-hmm. and so. Um, it is more blessed to serve God um, and suffer in this side of eternity. Yeah, I actually like that point in the scripture that you mentioned too, where it's like, if you start building a house and you can't finish it, like you mm. don't have the money or the energy or whatever, mm. like other people will see it and ridicule you because like, honestly, even in the Christian world, it's a thing where we see people like stop going to church or when we see people, you know, on their Instagram or whatever, like posting things of the world and you're kind of just like, oh, are they still a Christian? Mm. Like, even if it's not meant to be from a judgment, judgmental standpoint, like it's something that people will still notice. Like if you switch, however you're living your life, people around you will Mm. notice. If you're the type of person to post your life on the internet, people on the internet will notice. And it's true. And like, so like, it's something where like, you want to know that like, this journey that you're taking, like as you're taking next steps, like being prepared to like commit to it. And I think like, that's the biggest thing of like, if you're gonna have a positive influence on the people around you or a negative influence. Yeah. Cause like, let's say somebody saw someone building that house and they didn't finish. Like other people might be like, oh, never gonna build a house then. Cause it's too hard to finish. So some mm-hmm. people might be like, I never want to walk with God because look at how that person slipped mm-hmm. away. Like they were like committed and then now they just stopped. So that could like discourage other people from even like trying faith trying Mm -hmm. god per se whereas like if you are someone who like they see you getting better and better with your house or deeper and deeper in Mm. your faith that can encourage others of like oh wow this person's been like i thought it was gonna be like just a phase you know like i feel like a lot of people say that when somebody like yeah i get that for sure when someone's i went through a lot of phases in my life before i came before i committed to christ and like i would i would go in and out like i started these things of the world like even people are like, oh, meditate, it's so good for you. Mm-hmm. I did it for like three months, it felt good, but then it just crashed because there's no foundation in that ground. And then finally the Lord said to me, this, here I am, open your door and, yeah. and graciously. And now, you know, you we keep building on it. And, and so we, we just progress deeper and deeper. Yeah, and I think that's yeah. so cool though, because you don't even know like who has been watching that journey. Yeah. Where if you didn't go deeper, they might have been like, oh, Alex tried it, it and he yeah. looked like he was taking it seriously. And they're like, yeah, like, I knew it. I, yeah, I knew I had, Jesus yeah. couldn't save me. I knew right. Jesus wasn't real or whatever. Like, people would say that stuff. But, like, seeing now that you're so deep in your faith after yeah. all those years of kind of being, like, wishy-washy, like, not fully committed, like, right. people can see that and be like, oh, wow. Like, I thought he was going to fall out. I thought it wasn't going to last. Mm. And, like, why did it last? Maybe there's something in it that wasn't in all the like meditation right. and like all those other religions and stuff that you try mm-hmm. that like people who saw you go through all those phases mm-hmm. seeing that this one stuck and that it actually caused change in your life like it can have an impact on it so i like that scripture because it's just like you know like you building the house and like not finishing and not counting the cost doesn't just affect you other people right. around you see that amen yeah so thanks for sharing that that's good so how did this video stand out to you yeah i mean it definitely resonates with me because this marriage has been such a changing journey in life i yeah. think you called it a sancti- sanctification process yeah, it is, yeah. like it's definitely it's that point. because i always love god always took god seriously mm-hmm. but like i grew up seven day mantis and so i took the laws and the commandments like a little bit too serious mm-hmm. which i know that might sound weird but like it's true where i was like putting my trust and my hope and my salvation in keeping the commandments and in 
being like the perfect follower of God. And mm -hmm. so for me during like the time of COVID is when I like switched to like being non-denominational. Yeah. I kind of did a 180 where I was like, I read the scriptures where it was like, um, I'm blanking right now, but like the scriptures, Freedom, yeah, about yeah, where it's like, you know, like nothing that goes into you is sinful okay. and all of that. And so I was just like thinking like, oh, everything in the Old Testament, like all those things, like I don't have to follow them anymore. Like I can be of the world mm -hmm. and be of God. There's grace. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Grace, yeah. That's, that's sin, so grace abounds. Kind of yeah, yeah. No, yeah. like I literally was just like, oh, like I can yeah. do whatever I want now because Jesus fulfilled the law. So like none of that stuff mm -hmm. matters anymore. And so I did like a 180 where I used to put all my hope and trust into the law where then I was like, oh wait, if Jesus fulfilled the law, then like I don't have to follow anything. Mm -hmm. And that was bad. Cause I was in the world. I was literally that guy on the ladder where I went from being fully like kind of with God and then to like mm -hmm. open it up and be like, oh, I can be one foot in the world and one foot with God. And I genuinely like misinterpreted the freedom that we have through yeah. Christ to think that that's what it meant. To think that, oh, I can want to drink. I can want to go clubbing. Mm -hmm. I can want to try drugs and all this stuff i never did but i wanted to mm -hmm. and i didn't think that it was sinful because i was like oh well like the bible literally says nothing that you put into your body yeah. can like I, yeah cause sin and like all this stuff and so i was like oh like i can want all of these things and like it's okay and i like was justifying it but through marriage and like kind of having like a lifelong accountability partner now i have someone where like i'm always sharing my thoughts with alex i'm always like yo alex like I want to go to the club tonight. Like, I know you don't want to, but I really want to. I just want to shake my butt. Mm -hmm. um, and like, you would like, um, gently correct me. Yeah, you know? Well, yeah. sometimes not so gentle, but that's another conversation. Mm -hmm. But like you as a brother in Christ would correct me and be like, Hey Ruth, the uh, scripture says like, what's, which one is the one that's like, um, uh, yes, we can like have freedom. We have freedom. Yeah, that mean I should sin? Yeah. 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 So there's that one where it's like, you know, just because, the law has been fulfilled and like now through Christ we have freedom that doesn't mean that we should walk in sin mm -hmm. um and I think the scripture that I really like that I wanted to chat about too was in James chapter 3 mm. um and so it's saying so with the tongue so it's James chapter 3 9 through 12 mm -hmm. it says with the tongue we praise our Lord and Father and with it we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness out of the same mouth comes praise and cursing my brothers and sisters this should not be mm. can both fresh water and salt water flow oh, wow. from the same spring um and so yeah that mm. that's the main verse i wanted to focus on actually fresh was water. james three eleven. can both fresh water and salt water flow through the same spring because i think for me personally when i realized i had freedom in christ i was like oh i can be of the world and be a child of god but you can't like yeah. you have to choose one or the other you can't be a lake and an ocean at once right. like those two types of bodies of water don't exist in one like one will overtake the other and like let's say the world is the salty water like if you mix salty water with fresh water your fresh water will get mm -hmm. salty so if you mix the world with the life that you're living for jesus the life that you're living for Jesus will become worldly. Yeah. <laughs> like it's not, they can't both exist at once. Yeah. And so that really hit me with this video. Yeah. Now that is such a good point. I think let's get down to like the, the bare bones of the gospel. And so the law, like in, in the law, we cannot. So Romans eight talks about how in the law, uh, you know, God sent his son Jesus to be a sin offering for us because mm -hmm. we in our sinfulness cannot fulfill, perfect the law right and so by that like we were bought with a price we were brought with the blood of the lamb like mm -hmm. the blood of god himself and so like just knowing that um i just i can't help but think like okay my sin really grieves him it grieves the holy spirit and proves like you know i am born of god because i do not wish to continue in the world or continue sinning yeah because of this amazing sacrifice while we are still sinners christ died for us and mm -hmm. so like just having that truth really sit in like made me realize like, wow i'm so loved like god brought me at a price yeah. for my sin and for me to just walk all over that is like profaning it um i think it was hebrews that talks about like should we profane the spirit of grace if we keep on mm. sin and doing these sacrifices and so um it's just praise the lord that's all i could say in adoration towards him um yeah. and but i get that and i and it, and it is a really good point i praise god that you're feeling convicted by that yeah and that you've grown in that and i just pray that 
for anyone watching this right now that they could really just um, admire Jesus and what he did for mm -hmm. us and continues to do. He, he, he made it once and for all that he is a, he is our inner, he's interceding for us right now. So, yeah. yeah. So I think now it's like, okay, so like we know that obviously you can't be of the world and of God at the same time, mm -hmm. but how does someone make that next step? Like, uh, I know for yeah. you, you've kind of made it like maybe about like a year ago or whatever. Yeah. I'm still like in the works of like, you know, trying to commit all of my actions yeah. to Christ. So like, I would love to hear from your perspective how you actively made that yeah. next step to choose God. Wow, that's a great question. I uh, just pray for the Holy Spirit to just give me clarity on this because um, there was a long journey. I think a lot of it had to do with discipleship, people, mm -hmm. like being around people that were mature in their faith and that could point out blind spots because i had a lot of blind spots i still do have blind spots it's sanctification and so um i think that would be my first step is like having a brother in christ uh come in mentor me disciple me show me okay where are my blind spots someone could affirm a sin but i had a, I have a really good friend who really helped me to see my blind spots who would ask the hard mm -hmm. questions how's your faith are you are you staying pure stuff that isn't really talked about in church and so it like i just think it's so key to have someone that could be there walking in the faith with with you um and also marriage is a huge help as yeah. well like marriage is a great tool for sanctification it's beautiful um and just seeing how sinful i am in our marriage that has come out and I'm really called to serve Ruth and love her and die for her as Christ died for the church. And so what does that look like? Like laying down my pride and my needs, um, gently rebuking her, not uh, harshly rebuking mm -hmm. her. And so that has been another sanctification process. I think just being humble with God, saying, God, I really want to be humble. I want to feel the conviction. I want you to humble me, open my eyes, take the slime out of my eyes. Um, and I would say that's the first step, trying yeah. to find a mentor that can, can take, take you on this journey. Yeah. yeah, I like that. I actually really like that because I was going to say, like, obviously, like, you have been helpful in keeping me accountable, but also, like, a lot of my sisters in Christ have mm -hmm. been, like, great accountability partners. And I think it's interesting because you need to make sure that you have the right people like you can't yeah. look for people who are living the same lifestyle as like mm -hmm. half in the world half in god mm -hmm. to be with you as you take that next step into being fully into god because sometimes it might cause bitterness where they're like oh like does she think she's better than us does he think he's better yeah. than us that like he doesn't want to do the stuff that we were doing last week like this weekend he don't want to do it anymore um and so I've, I've been in those situations where like some of my friends have been like no, like, it's fine. It's not a sin. Like, you can do it. We've yeah. always done it. Like, what's different now? And I'm like, what's different now is that I don't want to do it anymore. I don't want to walk yeah. in the flesh. I want to pick up my cross. I want to deny mm. my flesh. I want to deny these cravings that I have Amen. for worldly things. And so that's the biggest thing sometimes that, like, you have to be, you have to be very, like, cautious in who you allow to speak into this season that you want to go into because not everybody's gonna love it and so like sometimes you have to find people outside of like your day-to-day -day friend yeah. group whether it be like an official like mentor or discipler or like someone in the church or something like that who can help you be accountable with these next steps because sometimes your friends will talk you back into doing the stuff that you want to do and yeah. you'll slip up but you have to have someone who you can like confess to and like who they can almost like give you advice and you know thankfully we have the scripture so if you don't have someone in your life directly yeah. you can always go to the word and like see what is in the New Testament, what they say. There's so much encouragement yeah. throughout the scripture of like Christians walking in this life and like denying the world. Like literally almost all the letters to the churches since like, well, to like the, um, what is it? The Gentile churches. Like a lot of it is like deny your old ways of like the mm -hmm. old religions and the Pagan old things. Stuff, yeah, yeah, that you used to follow and like look at what it looks like to follow Christ. So like if you don't have a person in your life, it's still yeah, in the no, word of this God. This is like the most important backbone to growing. Um, yeah. because people are flawed and so i would just first say that yeah like humble ourselves before god yeah um <clears throat> i think another thing that is like currently being helpful to me um and i actually heard this like through i, I showed you this video recently but like the jackie hill paris mm. that's her name jackie, jackie hill, hill Perry. Perry yeah. video um and basically she was talking about beyonce and like just like the music that she loved and all that stuff and she was saying like even though something in and of itself might not seem evil 
what is it rooted in? Mm. And I think that's like a big thing where sometimes like the shows that we're watching yeah. just seem like nice casual shows, but like who wrote it? What do those people believe in? You know, like if they're like, uh, like Satan worshipers or something, then like unknowingly that could also be in the shows that they wrote yeah. and like in the things that you're digesting. And like, so even though in and of itself, it doesn't seem evil. Like sometimes if you dive deeper and deeper, like you can see like ties to like evil roots and whatnot. And so just cutting all of those things out. And like, again, it goes back to denying your flesh because I love TV shows. I get so emotionally invested in characters. Like sometimes I don't want to stop it right in the middle of a season mm -hmm. or in the middle of an episode. Yeah. If they're like saying weird stuff. Cause I'm like, Oh no, like I need to watch this. Like I should do that show Riverdale. The first season started off so good, a murder mystery show. And then I can't remember if it was like the second or third season, but they literally started doing like witchcraft and like mm. rituals and all that stuff. And I was just like, I felt like emotionally invested because I was a couple seasons yeah. in by that point that I was like trying to keep watching it. Mm. But it just like every time they would start doing like a chant or something yeah. weird, like I just, I was like, I need to stop watching this. I need yeah. to stop. And like it literally took a point where I was like, okay, Ruth, like I know you don't want to stop, but you, and I know that you need to stop. So I had to cut it off. And like it's just little things like that mm. sometimes where like it can start off seeming all pure and all that stuff but like once you start feeling that unsettledness in your spirit listen to it like yeah thankfully as christians we have the holy yes. spirit residing in us born, yes yeah. yeah so like if you have the holy spirit residing in you and the holy spirit is giving you conviction about something listen to that mm -hmm. because the second that you're not listening to that you're walking in sin like the second that you're walking wow. in disobedience you're being sinful wow. and like you know, like we obviously will have to come face to face with the father and like face our judgment for that. And so like, wouldn't you rather not walk in sin than have to like tell God, we're like, well, I really like that TV show more than I like you. So, and I'm like, like God is a jealous God. He's gonna be like, excuse yeah. me, what? Um, and so I think that's like a big thing is like listening to that like internal conviction. Like, even if you're like, I don't know why I feel weird about listening to this song or watching this show, just stop it. Like it can't hurt you. It's better, uh, literally better to be safe than sorry. Totally, yeah. No, that's a great point. I mean, the world seems to offer a lot of escapes in all different forms, but it's all temporary. Yeah. How many times have I reached for... Something that I've been feeling convicted of today was like coffee. Like I tend to go to it as something like, oh, I, I need coffee to enjoy scripture or something, which is an idol. And so um, I was just thinking about it, like how many times has that coffee kept me full? Like, no, like Jesus is the living water. There could come a day where I'm stripped from all of that mm -hmm. and I'm in exile or something without coffee and, and I'm gonna need to rely fully on the Lord. And so let's do it now. Let's really rely fully on the Lord. Um, and so that is a great point. And just um, seeing like following our convictions, mm -hmm. seeing that if we have been born of God, like his seed, his imperishable seed is within us. So that's what first Peter says. And so, um, yeah, just letting that take hold of you. Yeah, I like that point that you just mentioned too, of like recognizing what might be an idol in your life. Because um, the other verse that was standing out to me was Matthew 6, the start of 24, where it says, no one can serve two masters. Mm. Oh, wow. Yeah, that, <laughs> yeah. One's, that, one's, yeah, that one's good. Yeah, and so like this scripture is talking about like money specifically, but like anything, like no one can serve two masters. You can't serve God and something else yeah like it just doesn't work like that like again as i said earlier god is a jealous god like he wants you to serve him and him alone yeah so if you're gonna choose god do it jump in yeah. all the way like choose him deny everything else that might be an idol like even if it's something small like you were saying like coffee sometimes yeah no, i've been doing it for years yeah, yeah i always needed two cups a day and it's like if i didn't have it then i'd be like well i'm not gonna enjoy scripture and yeah the fact that that's getting to me it's like really bad yeah, yeah. and it's like knowing those things because it's never the same for everyone like yeah. coffee like i drink coffee yeah, almost every day yeah. but coffee in and of itself is not sinful yeah. but if it's something that you're going to for your identity if it's something that you're going to to like define yourself and like that you are basically using as like a crutch where you're right. like oh i need this like it's a part of who i yeah. am and it's not god <laughs> then like that yes. makes it an idol yeah. because like literally like jesus and jesus alone should be who we get our identity yeah. from like we should identify as children of god and like if we identify as like children of god and da 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 then that's serving yeah. two masters just like cutting that off and like just little by little like seeing like oh do i feel like i genuinely can't live without this thing and like obviously this is a big one for me like sometimes i'm like 
I feel like I can't live without my phone. And so like, I'll literally try to like, just put my phone in another room. Like even if it's for an hour, but like to deny my flesh of like mm. something that I feel like I am putting my identity in. And like, if it's yeah. Instagram sometimes, or I'm like, I get like endorphins when people like respond to my story or endorphins when people mm -hmm. like and comment and tag me. Yeah. And like, sometimes I literally have to delete Instagram mm. because I'm like, I'm putting my identity into this thing and it's not the Lord. It's not scripture. It's not the word of God. And my identity should only be rooted in the Lord. Yeah, that's yeah. really good. So in that video about Beyonce stuff, she mentioned that she was in too deep. Mm -hmm. And like, would you offer any words of encouragement for someone that might be feeling like they're in too deep of something mm. and like, but, but knowing the Lord's grace has covered them, yeah. you know, his sin has already atoned for that if they're con confess it. And how, how have you in the past said, you know what, God, I, I've done this for a while. I'm not going to, I'm not going to let the enemy say I'm in too deep. Like, I'm mm -hmm. just going to lay it at your feet deny myself and move on with my relationship with you i don't because that could be a stumbling block for someone I'm yeah not. yeah so for context like in that jackie hill perry video she was saying like she's been a beyonce fan since she was eight years old so like when she started feeling conviction about listening to beyonce like it became hard for her to like be willing to cut it off because she said, thought she was in too deep she was yeah. like bro i've been a fan like my whole life but yeah i've been in that situation in two ways where mm -hmm. like one way it's been like let's say like the example I gave with like Riverdale or like a show or a book yeah. or whatever is like where I feel like I'm in too deep where I feel like emotionally invested mm -hmm. um and I don't know if it's because I'm like a very empathetic person or something like even though they're fictional characters I'd be like oh I care about them um or sometimes I feel in too deep where I'm like oh I've like publicly said like Christians could do whatever they want or whatever or like I've been like very vocal yeah. about something like would people view me as like a hypocrite if I start to do the other thing yeah um, and so those are two things sometimes where I feel like I'm in too deep. Um, with the Riverdale example, I kind of already gave that where like, honestly, it, you just have to deny your flesh mm -hmm. and like, that's, it is what it is where you have to be like, yo, I feel like I love this thing a lot and I just have to let it go. And like, I don't know if I technically have like any like wise words at this very moment. Maybe I'll think of something later, but it really goes to like reading the scripture and seeing like remembering the God that we serve and like why we serve him and why how amazing he is and like just looking at all the things that he's done for me in yeah. my life and being like would I not be willing to give up this one little part of my life of my day to serve the Lord mm -hmm. like would I not be willing to cut out this show or this song or whatever to serve the almighty God who has been so good and so yeah. faithful to me so I think like putting it into perspective sometimes of like what you're giving up versus the God that you serve and knowing that like he is greater and like the life the eternal life that we have through him is greater than any like momentary feeling or connection that we'll have yeah yeah so that's kind of like for that point but in terms of the in too deep sometimes where i'm like oh i feel like i've been very vocal about this thing okay. and like i don't want to switch because people are gonna like judge me and like call me a hypocrite or whatever it really comes down to humbling yourself and again like focusing on god over people yeah because I think that's another thing where sometimes wow. we tend to idolize people and the opinions of people. Was, yeah. Yeah. And we care to like, we tend to care more about what our neighbors think and our friends and our family than what the Lord thinks. And so if, again, it's like thinking that like, oh, I know I used to be very loud and proud about this thing, but now the Holy Spirit is convicting me about it. Are you going to deny the Holy Spirit and its convictions because you're scared of people judging you and calling mm. you a hypocrite? Or are you going to listen to the Holy Spirit? And if people are like, oh, well, I thought yesterday you were saying Christians can do whatever they want. I'd be like, yeah, I said that yesterday. And the Holy Spirit convicted me. And what? What you going to do? The word of God is absolutely amazing. This I was reading this this morning. First Peter chapter 4. Therefore, since Christ suffered in his body, arm yourselves with the same attitude. Because whoever suffers in the body is done with sin. As a result, they do not live the rest of their earthly lives for evil human desires, but rather for the will of God. Um, for you have spent enough time in the past doing what pagans choose to do. There's a whole list of things here, what they choose to do. They are surprised that you do not join them in their reckless wild living. So they'll be surprised, right, that yeah. you're not joining them. But, but they will uh, have to give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. Mm -hmm. So they're going to be surprised. We already know to expect, okay, these people that I used to engage in debauchery with, uh, 
getting drunk or anything. I mean, we're talking yeah. about worldly things, going to Beyonce concert or something. They, they're going to come after you and say, wow, why are you doing this? You're, you know, they're going to he heap abuse at you, it says, but they will have to give an account to God um, as well. And if we're in Christ, we're not going to have to face judgment and we're not going to be harmed by the second death. Um, and so we will be accountable for our actions and yeah. have things will burn up, but we will have eternal life in Christ. Um, and so just meditating on that, like the word of God is so good. And I just pray that you can get into the word and see that it's living and active like that. This scripture written over 2000 years ago is on my mind yeah. to encourage whoever's watching yeah. this and my wife and myself today. And so, yeah, that's awesome. And our kitty cat. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's so good. Thanks for sharing yeah. that. Yeah. I love that. I say like, as you want to dive deeper with God, you of course have to dive deeper into his word. Yeah. And I think that's kind of like the message I want to end it on too. It's just like, you know, you can't do anything without equipping yourself with the full armor of God. Mm -hmm. And like one of them, it's like the belt of truth. What yeah. is truth? Truth is the word of God. Amen. Um, and so you have to equip yourself with that because not only are people going to attack you, and this could be a whole other video, but the enemy will attack you as well. Very hard, right? And as you try and go deeper with the Lord, spiritual attacks will come. Yeah. And so really the only way to fight the spiritual is with the word of God and to like, you know, rebuke things and like yeah. know the truth of who God says you are. Amen. And so, yeah, to anyone watching this and you're kind of like, you, you resonate with that video and you're like, man, I really want to choose the ladder of God. I really want to step over. Amen. This is step one, is equipping yourself with the word of God and mm -hmm. understanding it and letting it resonate in your heart. And not only that, but like letting it change your heart. You know, like God says, he'll remove our heart of stone with the heart of flesh. Yes. And like the only way is to let God change your heart and mm. that's how you start to deny all those things because Amen. what your heart your heart is where love is yeah right, right? right. so like what, yeah. when your heart changes that's when yeah. you start loving the things of god and hating the things mm -hmm. of this world and so if you don't allow that like internal spiritual change to be made then it's going to be harder to change the physical it's going to yeah. be harder to change your habits and all of that so the word of god yeah whoever confesses with their mouth that jesus is lord and believes in their heart Mm -hmm. that God raised them from the dead will be saved. And so believing in our heart is walking with God, climbing the ladder of God yeah, and not, not engaging in worldly things. And yeah. that's how God will see our good works uh, and, and we will be called his children Yeah, because he saved us by grace through Amen. his cross, through the cross. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for having this conversation with yeah. me. Um, and thank you all for watching. Uh, yeah, this is really good. And I definitely want to be a lot more intentional as I continue living out my own spiritual Amen. walk. Um, so, yeah, all we can do is just pray that, you know, the Holy Spirit continues to convict and we continue to listen. So thank you all for watching this. Tune in to the next video, whatever it may be. Hopefully Alex is here with us again in a future video. Um, don't forget to subscribe and share this video if you liked it. Um, but yeah, we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.